Good morning, friends. It is Monday morning, May 9th. Yes, I know that it is 8 a.m. It's not 9 a.m., but I have mediation training from 9 to 5 all day today and every day this week. So I was going to jump on here a little early this morning and talk to you all. One of the topics that cause people the most stress is change. So we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. But before we jump into that, my name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Niantic and Iliopolis, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light to Life and Love Ministries, an outreach effort for those who are spiritual but not religious, or for those who are faith-based but don't necessarily have a church home. And I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And let's jump into it. Speaking of change, the weather is doing that right now. I don't know why I feel so compelled to give you a weather update, but here we are. So last week, in the 50s and 60s, cold, rainy, windy, and it was just cold outside. Today, it's summer. It's going to be 80. This week, we're having heat warnings. It's going to be, a feels like temperature of over 100 by Wednesday. So, yeah, weather is changing. And it's so interesting to me, and especially in the Midwest in these transitional seasons, how quickly and profoundly these changes can come. Life can be like that, too. One day, we're minding our own business, and then all of a sudden everything changes. And this can come for a variety of reasons. It can come from our work in our professional settings. Something can change with our work assignments, with our maybe our boss or something of that nature that causes a disruption in what had become a comfortable routine. Change can come in our personal lives if we have to move or when our kids reach a new stage in their lives or our parents reach a new stage in their lives or we have a significant loss in our life. And change can happen for a variety of ways. Maybe if we are a part of a church, maybe there's a change in the pastor or leadership or life is full of change and it's always coming at us. One thing that doesn't change is that change will happen. So we are better served when we can cope with change and have a healthy base from which we can build on so that when change does come, it doesn't uproot and upend everything in our lives. So today, let's talk about how we can best prepare ourselves. So let's begin. If we see that change is coming on the horizon, then the best way we can prepare for that is to prepare for that. Plan ahead. If we can see that uh, at work, if our boss has is closing in on retirement, we well, you know there's going to be a big change. So prep yourself and plan ahead for that sort of thing. In life, when our kids start getting to closer to those milestone ages, we know a change is coming. So planning ahead a little bit and knowing how we're going to to change our days in response to that. Uh, it's not going to take away the anxiety of change, but it can help us to navigate through those times. And so plan ahead when you can. Second, create routines that serve you. If you have a morning routine and a going to bed evening routine, the more you can keep those and honor those, then the more you're going to be able to cope with changes throughout the day. If you wake up the same every day, if you go to bed the same every day, then that's going to give you a foundation that you can deal with things throughout the day that might be disruptive. So create routines that serve you. Don't create routines that bind you, but create routines that serve you. And I know this is for me as much as it is for anyone else, but eat well, exercise, and get enough sleep. When we do those things that also, along with healthy routines, creates health in our bodies and in our lives so that, again, when disruptions come, 
we are better able to capable to handle those. We're not overwhelmed by chronic stress or lack of sleep or all of the other things. And even if we are in an, an acute way momentarily, we can quickly recover from those instances. So take care of yourself, create healthy routines, establish a healthy baseline. When changes come, find something each day that you can do that brings you, brings you comfort. No, Melissa or anyone else who might be tempted to do this, that doesn't mean go and grab an ice cream every day. No, go and uh, put on some music that you love to, to sing along with or to jam to. Uh, let's see, take a walk. It doesn't have to be a big, long walk. It can be, but take a 10 minute walk just to clear your head a little bit or take a warm bath. Do something for yourself. It doesn't have to be a huge monumental thing. It can be a 10 minute deal, but do something in the midst of change and coping that brings you some comfort. And if change is due to a loss, Honor the feelings of loss. Don't gloss over them. There's a lot of pressure in our culture today to be happy and fulfilled and joyful all the time. Those are great feelings. I love feeling those things. But sometimes grief is the most appropriate feeling that we have. When we're feeling that, honor those feelings. Whatever you're feeling, you need to feel, you need to express it, you need to examine it, see if it is appropriate for what you're doing in this day and time. And if it's not appropriate, figure out why you're feeling it and get it out of your life. If it is appropriate, don't ignore it. Uh, express it. Write it out. Make a scrapbook. Um, if you're an artsy type of person, put together a collage or a scrapbook or something that can honor and express your grief, or talk it out with a trusted friend or pastor or therapist. Whatever those feelings are, you need to get them out of your body. So express them in a healthy way. Avoid numbing behaviors. Don't do things to avoid your feelings. Don't do things to numb them. You need to express them, but also don't buy a house there. If you're feeling grief, that's appropriate, but move through it. There's not a timetable. Don't let anyone impose a timetable on you, but keep taking steps through your grief. And it may take you, I don't know, they say, well, I don't care what they say. Your grief takes you as long as it takes you, but try not to live in it. Try to find a way to bring joy in your life. Try to engage in one of these other behaviors like healthy habits and something each day that brings you joy. And as you're experiencing these feelings, keep moving forward through them. So change. Establish routines, healthy routines that serve you. Take care of yourself and do something each day that is comforting for you and healthy. And then lastly, and I can't emphasize this one enough, create a gratitude habit. Whether it's sharing three things at dinner time that you're grateful for, or if you keep a gratitude journal, however you choose to do it, be intentional every day of acknowledging or highlighting the good things, the blessings. Sometimes it's as simple as Look at that night sky, it's beautiful, or a sunrise or sunset, or maybe you see a flower that just captivated you for a moment. But three things every day, and it helps to adjust your mindset. So again, there are a thousand other things I could have thrown in here, but I think these are a good place to start. Take care of yourself, create healthy routines, build in activities that bring you comfort and joy that are also good for you and practice gratitude. I hope this helps. Life is going to bring change, but we can navigate this well. And who knows, perhaps a change that's on the horizon that we're dreading is a change that's going to bring a lot more opportunity and joy and even love into our lives. So that's my message for you this week. 
and I will see you again next week. Be well, friends. Bye for now.